Uh, the House took its ease there for five minutes, and I see some members who are listed uh, have, have been able to get here. So the next item on the order paper is a motion on support for sheep and beef farmers through the COVID-19 pandemic. I'll ask the clerk to please read the motion. That this assembly notes the important role that, beef, that sheep and beef farmers play in ensuring a safe and secure supply of food for the population, acknowledges that a significant portion of sheep and beef farmers, such as hill farmers, are situated in areas of natural constraint and severely disadvantaged areas, and face considerable challenges in running their farms, recognises that COVID-19 has had a huge impact on the sheep and beef sector with the closure of restaurants, hotels and the wider food services industry, further recognises that due to low incomes and the minimal support from other COVID-19 related schemes, the sheep and beef farmers in areas of natural constraint have been disproportionately impacted by the pandemic and calls on the Minister of Agriculture, Environment and Rural Affairs to ensure that equality and fairness underpins the allocation of the £25 million Agri-Food Sector Market Intervention Fund and that sheep and beef farmers from areas of natural constraint receive the support they need through the distribution of this funding. Thank you. I call Mr Declan McAleer to move the motion. Um, moved. Thank you. The Business Committee has agreed to allow up to one hour and 30 minutes for this debate. The proposer of the motion will have 10 minutes to propose and 10 minutes to wind. All other speaker Speakers will have five minutes. I call Mr. Declan McAleer. Um, I'd like to take this opportunity to commend the motion here today to the House, uh, calling for support for the beef and sheep sector uh, during this COVID uh, crisis. Uh, the, pandemic, the COVID pandemic um, across the country has highlighted the importance of the agriculture and the food sector in providing food security. Um, and COVID has brought a growing awareness of the value of local food producers. The agri-food sector has been negatively impacted by the crisis, and I want to commend the excellent work of our frontline farmers and food producers uh, during the course of this um, pandemic. Certainly, as a member of the committee, uh, we have received weekly updates on the current issues affecting the agri-food sector. I want to take the opportunity as well to thank the department officials and the committee officials for providing this. But during all this, it's consistently flagged up in the week, week eight, updates that uh, since the lockdown, the impact on markets and at farm level has been profound. And indeed, in written correspondence which we received, it highlighted financial pressures are increasing rapidly on businesses across the supply chains. For example, the loss of the food service markets, ex certain export markets, reduced productivity in processing plants, and increases in some input costs like animal feed. And all this has converged to create a, a crisis for the, the farming and agri-food sector. And industry has been consistently calling for financial support measures. And some of the measures... Sorry, um, sorry Mr McAleer. Oh, is it your own? I was so. about to reprimand somebody else for interrupting you, but um, <laughs> don't if members could try and keep their phone away from uh, the speakers. Thank you, Mr okay. McAleer. And some of the government initiatives which have been made available, uh, such as the, the self-employed income support scheme, where the um, self-employed people can receive a taxable grant worth up to 80% of their average trading profits in previous years. This is paid by the HMRC. However, the self-employed scheme uh, isn't enough for uh, to support our farmers during the COVID-19 crisis. And this is particularly true of our beef and uh, sheep sector farmers. Their average income is around half of the regional average wage, under £12,000 a year. And when you apply the 80% and then tax that there, it really isn't enough to sustain them through this crisis. So it's, it's, it's that particular sector, the SEISS, isn't having, will have a very negligible small impact. So it's pivotal that we keep the food supply moving, we keep the food chain operation in this pandemic. So, uh, and to do that, the agriculture sector needs our substantial support. It also concerned that uh, in some of the reports which we have, some of the independent reports that we have seen, it, seen there has been huge losses sustained by the beef and sheep sector, particularly as a result of the rising input costs, the closure of the um, food service industry, which accounts for 35 to 40 percent of the beef and sheep um, red meats. And we've seen some losses in the region of £240 per head for cattle and £31 uh, per head for sheep. And that's very, very um, substantial for small farmers. The scale of the impact of the COVID uh, can be seen in the closure of the March, in, in March just in 2020. Uh, and the, the serious restrictions are having an impact on the number of cattle being traded. 
Indeed, if we look at some of the, the, the trading figures, we've got some information here from APHIS. There has been a substantial amount of farm-to-farm -farm movement of cattle during the course of the period when the, uh, the marts were closed. Um, like, for example, on the 26th of April week beginning was 7,500. The 19th of April week was 7,000. So during those weeks, there's been substantial movement of cattle from farm to farm. And if we apply uh, the average loss of £238 per head, that is a huge, huge loss to particularly the, the beef sector. So it is. Um, so, uh, so, uh, so for so the figure we're looking at there, it's, it's very substantial. So and even the LMC has said to us, on the 29th of March, just five cattle were transferred from uh, farms to March in the north compared to 7,800 cattle traded in the, in the previous year last year. So the March has had a huge, huge impact during the COVID crisis uh, on our, um, our beef and sheep sector. And another figure that we're getting from the LMC shows that during March 2020, there were a total of 30,320 uh, cattle moved from farmed, farms to either March or farms uh, recorded by EFAS. So if you, again, if you apply the, the loss per head, that's a huge, huge, huge loss. And these, uh, again, uh, the, demonstrate the importance of the marts and the role that they play in the meat, su meat supply chain. It also demonstrates the scale of impact. And the Minister um, will be aware, from, certainly from Sinn Féin's perspective, that you know, given the scale of the loss, given the fact that the beef and sheep farmers represent 80% of all farms here in the north. They're the very primary producers at the beginning of our food chain. We have made a proposal that in relation to this particular sector, that 15 million of the 25 million be allocated to this particular sector, given the, the impact that they're sustaining and given the scale uh, of the production that they provide. Now that's for that particular sector, and that's not with the standing uh, the other sectors as well as have been impacted. Sheep meats have also been affected very, very negatively as well, again, because of the closure of the marts, the restaurants and the food service sector. And we know that uh, the incomes in these areas are also extremely low. And this is compounded, of course, by the loss of the LFA ANC payment again, which farmers relied on in around March time to sustain them. And it concerns us that sheep had not, has not been referenced for funding uh, in this particular scheme that was announced by the Minister. And the, again, there's a huge impact on the sector as well, the evidence being £31 per head for sheep and uh, add in the input costs. Uh, input costs um, were told by many um, assessments that fertiliser went up during the pandemic by about £15 a tonne and feeds by about £25 a tonne. So that has all been sustained by the, the, the sector. Uh, indeed, the, um, the, the, the information from the, the department itself would show that the uh, there has been a decline in income, it has been down by 26% last year, and again, the, the beef and sheep sector are, are way at the lowest ebb in terms of all of the sectors, and will uh, avail of less of the, the, um, from the self-employed scheme or any other particular scheme uh, set for, to deal with the COVID crisis. A recent research paper shows that agriculture support, uh, looks at agriculture support across the, other, the devolved regions, for example, in Wales, they provide an extra five and a half million to the basic payment scheme. And we should point out that in DERA's January, January monitoring round, it was highlighted that the department surrendered 12 million uh, to the Department of Finance of money that wasn't spent in the financial year. And I think it's important that we look towards future financial years that we try to avoid this situation. And we should be looking at, for example, using money that wasn't going to be spent year on year to perhaps make a bid for uh, like an ANC scheme, because this would compensate these, these, these hill, these marshy areas, where it's more inhospitable and more challenging to, to farm in. And that's where a lot of the overwhelming, in fact, 10,000 of our, of our uh, beef and sheep producers are in those areas. And that the, the, the re retention, the return of the ANC scheme will potentially help mitigate, mitigate against the, co the impact that the COVID and other pressures that they face. Um, so, uh, so as, I, as I said, before COVID, the farm incomes had dropped significantly, 26% last year before the crisis began, and they started to plummet again at £240 per head for cattle, £31 for beef, and the lockdown of the restaurants and all has con contributed greatly towards that there. So the, just to conclude, um, the, we're all in this crisis together. Um, I want to make it very, very clear that in supporting this motion, uh, it doesn't mean that you're demeaning or not demeaning, you're not supporting the other sectors. We're just flagging up, highlighting this particular sector. Yes, go ahead. 
Member for Giving Way, and, and on that point, uh, and he has outlined the wider factors that are, are and issues that are facing both sheep and beef farmers across Northern Ireland. But in particular, in relation to the money that has been secured for COVID response by the Minister, would he accept that it is only fair and reasonable that, albeit we will not have enough money to go around all that has been accepted in any of these relief schemes across all the different departments, but it is therefore vital that we target this funding at those that were most particularly affected by the COVID-19 pandemic. And I realise there was an element of impact across all sectors, but it is important that we focus uh, to help those farmers that particularly were impacted as a result, particularly in focus of COVID-19. Well, I thank the member for his intervention. Uh, I think it's worthwhile pointing out that all farmers have been impacted by this. All of the sectors have been impacted by this, and we've seen the independent evidence that, uh, per head how that has been impacted, and we've seen the number of movements that there has been from farm to farm and after the collapse of the, the mart. So I, I do accept, but I think we need to accept that all farmers have been impacted by the rising input costs, and all farms have been input, impacted by the decreasing farm gate prices, uh, particularly impacted by the COVID crisis. But I just want to return to the I want to underline the point I made here, is that by supporting this motion doesn't, uh, doesn't negate support, for, say, for example, for the dairy sector or the horticulture sector, any other particular sector. But we, uh, we have been lobbied quite heavily, and so has, so has the committee been lobbied quite heavily, particularly by the sheep sector, that they had not been included in this particular response, and indeed by the, uh, the, the, the beef producers in the hill area as well. So just concluding, folks, we're all in this together. We're not opposed to any of the other sectors, but we just want to take this opportunity today to highlight the importance of the beef and sheep sector to our uh, food production cha um, chain at this particular time in the middle of this COVID pandemic. So, Gourmet and Margaret. Thank you, and I thank uh, members for getting here on time. It, it was <laughs> a bit difficult, but the Business Committee has arranged to meet at 1 p.m. today. I propose, therefore, by the leave of the Assembly, to suspend this sitting until 2 p.m. Sitting is by leave suspended until we come back at 2 p.m. when there will be urgent questions, after which we will return to the content of this debate. Sitting is suspended. Thank you. Further consideration, uh, but his point is on the record. Now let us continue. We now return to the motion for support for sheep and beef farmers through the COVID-19 pandemic. And I'm trying to see who we take next. And I call Justin McNulty. I welcome the motion, an opportunity to highlight the difficulties faced by our sheep and beef farmers in running their farms in the middle of the coronavirus pandemic. Many will not know, but as a youngster, I was brought up on a farm. My uncle had no children, so he lived across the road from us, and essentially we were the farm children. So I grew up milking cows and calving cows as well, and tending to the beef cattle, so the beef herd and the dairy herd. So I've enormous experience in the, in the farming backgrounds, taking in the hay and the, the transition to silage, covering the silage pit. Very, very many happy memories of my childhood and my youth on the farm. So I identify completely with the, the demands on farmers. I also remember in my youth the langing, the langing on the sheep. And I think to a large extent farmers feel like they've got a langing on them to, because of no support. Thankfully that practice of putting a langing on the sheep on two legs has been abandoned. Uh, but I'm sure farmers feel like there's almost a langing on four legs now because of how they've been held back um, with that, not enough supports. And now on top of that we have the the COVID-19 pandemic. With an estimated 19,800 cattle and sheep farms in, in 2018, and nearly 80% of the total number of farms in the north, the sector plays a significant role in our economy and supports the livelihoods of so many people and families. Even before COVID-19 struck, the agri-food sector on this island was struggling with the uncertain future brought about by Brexit. There remains a lack of clarity about the new rules and regulations farmers will now have to deal with, along with the supply line that may be both in and out of the EU. The pandemic has made an already difficult situation potentially catastrophic for farmers and their families. 
as well as the social restrictions of lockdown that we are dealing with, sheep and beef farmers have businesses to run that cannot be shut down temporarily. Animal welfare and food security measures continue to require constant attention, and the nature of sheep and beef farming means the overheads associated with running a farm do not stop in the midst of a global pandemic. Our farmers have also seen significant sections of their markets closed down. While the temporary closure of local livestock marts may have had a short-term effect, the shutting down of the hospitality sector, restaurants, hotels and the wider food services industry across Europe and their ability to restore customer confidence and return to trading is likely to have longer-lasting implications for farmers. Farmers' ability to continue to operate and to provide produce is, of course, vitally important in any crisis, but they also rely on the rest of the food supply chain to continue to function. The support provided to the haulage sector for import and export, as well as the hospitality and retail sectors, is essential for the maintenance and security of that supply chain. But many of our sheep and beef farmers, such as hill farmers in severely disadvantaged areas, have had to meet the full costs of continuing in business, with the prospect of ever lower market returns. The initial government support schemes, such as the COVID-19 Self-Employment Income Support Scheme and the Coronavirus Business Interruption Loan Scheme, were not designed with agricultural businesses in mind. Therefore, the £25 million Agriculture Agri-Food Sector Market Intervention Fund has been welcomed by farmers, and I welcome it here too. It is crucially important that support will be and is directed to those in the sector who have sustained the heavy losses. It is essential, as the motion states, that the equality and fairness underpins its allocation. The 25, 000, or sorry, 25 million um, fund has a lot of ground to cover. Our sheep and beef farmers, particularly in areas of natural constraints, must receive the support they need through the agri-food sector market intervention fund distribution. Where am I over last Cam Corlett? I support the motion. I call William Irwin. Thank you, Mr. Deputy Speaker. And at the very outset uh, of my contribution, I declare an interest as a partner in the dairy farm. The motion, as it's out, as outset, makes a very valid point, and one that I have made repeatedly in this House in the last few months. That is the important, importance of our food producers at all times, but especially so in a great time of crisis. We have farmers and farm families that have worked tirelessly right throughout this crisis to produce food for us all. Having security of supply and having safety and traceability in our food supply is most, of utmost importance and is what sets our produce apart from many other regions across the globe. Our standards are very high and people in Northern Ireland can enjoy a very high quality produce from our hard-working farmers across the province, which is excellent welfare standards as a foundation. That is important. This has also been the case throughout this pandemic. Food standards have remained high, and that work does not stop in any circumstance. The rules still must be applied and adhered to, and adhered to checked and rechecked. That is all for the safety of the consumer. What is also very clear and very true is that farmland and farmland productivity varies greatly throughout Northern Ireland. And this is recognised in many ways with various schemes designed to assist farming in areas where the general activity of farming the land is of greater challenge due to the hills and mountains or indeed wetter uh, low-lying land. With all that in mind, we have had to deal with the pandemic in Northern Ireland, as has many other countries across the globe. And due to the lockdown and the need to reduce interaction between people, this has massively altered the purchasing trends and eating habits of consumers. That, in turn, had a tremendously negative impact on food and hospitality sectors, with hotels, bed and breakfast, restaurants and cafes all closed. With those closures, the demand for uh, meat and dairy products locally has been significantly diminished. When you consider that a normal, in normal circumstances, a large fast food operator in Northern Ireland accounted for 12 per cent of beef used in the province, uh, and take, for instance, the hundreds of cafes across the province, all using liquid milk for coffees, desserts, uh, etc. And it is clear to see how damaging such a significant drop in demand has been on farm incomes across the province and across uh, some sectors. 
In terms of generally supporting the agricultural sector, this is an issue that has been discussed on many occasions within the committee over the past few weeks. And as a committee member, I am keen to see the maximum level of support provided to our farmers across the sectors in order to help mitigate some of COVID-19 uh, issues from an economic perspective. There are a number of sectors that have been practically unaffected by coronavirus, and there are other sectors that have been badly affected. Therefore, it is important that the assistance scheme recognises this. That must be a key part in this debate, the fact that there is a variance of level of impact in different sectors. No, no one disagrees. The industry should be supported, but with limited funding available and assistance already provided, and the economic response to COVID-19 running into billions of pounds, we must be pragmatic as to how this can be done. In terms of additional support, I welcome this self-employment scheme and the fact that it, this was opened to farmers to apply. And uh, I understand that I will, yes. Would the member agree with me that many, many farmers actually missed out on that scheme because they had invested their income back into their farm, buying farm machinery and doing necessary works to the farms, which then meant they did not have enough profit to actually be able to avail of the self-employed scheme? Members, an extra minute. I can thank the member for intervention. Uh, that is open to interpretation. Yes, there may be some that did, uh, but I know a lot of farmers that did avail of the scheme. Uh, so uh, I'm not sure to the extent of those number of farmers, but I'm sure there are absolutely worse farmers that showed profits that are small. That is quite possible. And the harsh reality of farming is in normal times, as we all know. Therefore, we can understand the pressures. Uh, now at play, given the pandemic, uh, pandemic and the impacts associated, the 25 million that has been made available is very welcome, and I thank the minister, the minister Edwin Pooch and the executive for the hard work and resourcing in this scheme. The way it is opened up and is accessed will be important in terms of ensuring that producers gain benefit from it in those difficult circumstances. The importance of the scheme will be in, ensuring it gives recognition to the levels of impact suffered across the sectors. That will be difficult, of course, and no doubt is contrary, co contributing to the delay in releasing this assistance. However, it is important that the scheme recognises the financial losses incurred and is reflective of this in allocations. This, at the other side of the pandemic, and we will, God willing, get through this crisis, we will still heavily rely on the agri agri-food sector. And when all the various consumer outlets reopen, the demand will once again be increased. However, it is vital that we ensure producers economically survive this current downturn in demand. This assistance will be of some help in, the, in this regard, and I urge the Minister to push forward in releasing this funding as soon as practically possible. Thank you. I call Rosemary Barton. Thank you very much, Mr Deputy Speaker. I welcome the opportunity to take part in this debate today, particularly as the agricultural sector has been affected, has been offered very limited support through the various COVID-19 pandemic schemes. Businesses within other sectors have received or are going to receive lump sums of financial assistance through the Business Support Grant or the Hospitality, Tourism and Retail Grant. Yet, during the whole crisis, the farming community have continued to produce their products and managed to play their vital role in the food supply chain. This supply, this supply seamlessly into a, this supplied seamlessly into a situation where the livestock marts closed for a period of time. Beef and lamb prices tumbled. Milk prices are steadily reducing. And to add insult to injury. We hear of processors bringing in Polish beef to supply a UK supermarket. In recent weeks, the significant bid by the DERA Minister of £105 million to the Department of Finance for Agriculture has, I assume, been rejected, and a £25 million fund for farmers and horticultural industry been allocated. That is just 24% of the original bid. These are stressful times for all businesses, including agricultural. Therefore, they cannot and must not be forgo the forgotten element of this coronavirus pandem pandemic. 
they must receive due and reasonable support to ensure there is a food supply beyond this crisis. Thankfully, in Northern Ireland, the family-based farming enterprises are a very important part of our community. Unlike other parts of the UK and sections of the Republic of Ireland, Europe and indeed throughout the world, where the large, farming fa the large factory farming techniques have been established, which churn out agricultural products without the same consideration or management of quality products and protection of the environment. There has long been support for local hill farmers, those who farm in what is termed as severely disadvantaged areas, previously referred to as areas of natural constraint, the less favoured area compensatory allowance was in place. DEERA's own figures highlight that the SDA farms are well over £100 per acre worse off in income terms than lowland farms. With the removal of the areas of with the removal of the areas of natural constraint payments, it is estimated that around 10,000 farms had been impacted. A very large percentage of land in my constituency of Fermanagh and South Tyrone. On hill farms, there are very limited options for crops, with grass being the only feasible option, and therefore a, a wide range of livestock farming takes place. In considering my support or not for this motion, I note the line which says, to ensure that equality and fairness underpins the allocation of the 25 million agri-food sector market intervention fund, and that sheep and beef farmers from areas of natural constraint receive the support they need through the distribution of this funding. I am seeking from the sponsors of this motion that their plan is not just to provide these two sectors with support. I fully appreciate that these two sectors have financially su suffered due to COVID, but I'm also aware that sectors like the dairy farmers have also suffered a significant downturn in their market returns. Probably now their return is below the cost of production. And also wherever a need is demonstrated in the agricultural world. While this Sinn Féin motion raises concerns about farming in the ANC areas, the payment to farmers in these areas was ended when a consultation in 2016 on the future of the ANC scheme was carried out, a consultation ordered under the watch of a Sinn Féin Dard minister and decided upon by a DUP DERA minister. I'd be interested to know what weight the executive and, in particular, the finance please? minister give to the 2016 Rural Needs Act when deciding on the grants and financial support. Therefore, I hope that this 25 million support for the agricultural the minister is up. industry will be distributed in a fair and equitable manner. The member's time is up. I call John Blair. Deputy Speaker, uh, thank you and apologies that I didn't hear you there in the first instance. Uh, speaking on behalf of Alliance, Deputy Speaker, I am happy to support the motion, uh, which comes, as I understand it, as detail of the COVID-19 agriculture, horticulture and fishery support is still subject, I think, to some fine-tuning and final decision-making within the department. And not unlike the, the previous speaker, Mrs Barton, I will probably refer during the course of, of the next few minutes to the need to perhaps look a little wider than the strict confines of the motion um, that, that's laid before us. But as I say, generally can support, understand the rationale behind it, and hopefully I can clarify where I'm coming from as well. The motion accurately reflects the negative impact of COVID-19 on the sectors listed within it referring as it does to the devastating blow caused by the abrupt halt to the hospitality industry activity. We know also that this had similar effect on the dairy sector and right across, in fact, many sectors of our overall economy. I am not sure myself whether the Minister uh, has been updated in consideration by the DERA Committee at this stage on the overall COVID financial support package and its potential remit, but I am aware of the variety of responses to the Committee's request for feedback. That feedback, I think, demonstrates that the range of those in need might be greater 
than those hitherto recognised. The Minister may recall that when he came to the Committee uh, to inform us of this funding on the 22nd of May, I asked about building in flexibilities for review as this progressed. Now, the Minister's response on that occasion, pointing out that it was a finite resource, may not have been exactly the answer I wanted at that time, but it was, of course, understandable, given the priority of getting this moving. So, Deputy Speaker, I think this motion gives us an opportunity for further consideration so that a wider range of those of need within our agriculture sector might be helped. Maybe, for example, a pillar of funding could be retained for emerging need, or perhaps could there be a contingency built in for similar purposes. Perhaps the Minister can reflect on the prospect of that type of flexibility when he responds today. Thank you. I call Harry Harvey. Thank you, Deputy Speaker. <clears throat> Mr Speaker, as has already been acknowledged, COVID-19 has and continues to have a serious impact upon our agri-food sector. Farming is a volatile industry, and the best of times and COVID-19 has brought additional challenges for local producers unimaginable at the start of 2020. The motion refers to the challenges faced by those farming within areas of natural constraint during the COVID-19 crisis and calls on the Minister to ensure equality and fairness underpin the allocation of the Agri-Food Sector Market Intervention Fund. Unfortunately, the impact of COVID-19 has been felt right across the farming sector, regardless of farm location. It is therefore vital that in the interests of equality and fairness, we do not deem farmers ineligible for support due to land location. The £25 million intervention fund represents the most generous allocation made by any UK or EU administration for agriculture sector, and I believe it reflects importance placed on the sector locally. I know the Minister was instrumental in lobbying executive colleagues to ensure a bespoke funding package was established, and I would wish to join the Ulster Farmers Union and others and expressing my thanks to him on behalf of the farmers in my own constituency. There is no doubt that the current challenges faced within farming are both deep and complex. The closure of food services sector equating to 40% of beef sales and the challenges faced with the procurement of inputs has affected the beef industry particularly. The implementation of new protocols regarding social distancing has also impacted right across the sector. I have been contacted by numerous sheep farmers in my own constituency in relation to the viability of their business in the weeks ahead, with lamb prices having remained low and volatile for some time to come. Concern has been expressed to me that in the weeks ahead there will be further pressure on prices as a large number of lambs become available for slaughter. There is also the additional vulnerability for sheep farmers in relation to their reliance on the ROI market, with 45% of lamb flock being slaughtered in the Republic of Ireland. I am aware that the Department has focused its energy on the beef and dairy industries, given the immediate impacts of COVID-19 upon them. However, as the situation evolves, others such as sheep farmers may require similar support, and I would ask the Department to bear this in mind. It is important that the intervention fund maintains flexibility in its scope to reach to allow for this. In conclusion, Mr. Speaker, it is essential that individual farm businesses can benefit from the intervention fund and that it is focused at meeting the needs of the worst impacted first, regardless of sector or locality. If we want to ensure that the fund is distributed as fairly and equally as possible, then it must be flexible in providing financial assistance to our farm businesses across Northern Ireland, whose viability is crucial to our wider economic recovery post-COVID. Thank you, Speaker. I call Emma Sheeran. 
As I've spoken uh, about at length before in this chamber, I have a particular interest in this sector, coming as I do from a farming family. And just last week, myself and my colleague Declan here in front of me joined with Sinn Féin TDs, uh, Claire Curran and Matt Carthy from Roscommon and Monaghan respectively, in doing a Facebook Live uh, focusing on rural issues. And we were inundated with questions from rural dwellers the length and breadth of the country. And although the accents changed, the issues were the same. We heard from farmers worried about Brexit, people asking about the provisions that were going to be made for beef and lamb producers uh, in the wake of COVID-19, and from poultry farmers concerned about avian flu. And these producers were united in their acknowledgement of government intervention on their own livelihoods. The statistics for the North reflect the dominance of agriculture in the rural economy here. There are nearly 25,000 farms in the North of Ireland supporting over 48,000 jobs. Agriculture here has an annual turnover of £4.5 billion and it makes up 1.7% of the North's gross value added, compared to just half a percent across the UK as a whole. The industry accounts for 2.5% of total employment in the North, more than double the UK-wide level of 1.1%. The north of Ireland is more reliant on agriculture and the agri-food industry than any area in the UK. Specifically within those statistics, we can see that 90% of farms drive two-thirds or more of their total standard output from grazing livestock, including 10% classified as dairy farms and 79% as cattle and sheep. Approximately 20,000 farmers are classified as cattle and sheep producers. And the 2018 figures show that they represented more than 25% of gross output of farms. We also know that income has decreased substantially in less favoured areas for hill farmers. And at this point, I want to reflect on the statement that my dad told me at the weekend there, which was reportedly quoted by a neighbour of his growing up who had had to come home from America to look after the family farm when his heart really wasn't in it. And he said at that time, and this is years ago, farming was a curious practice. One can work for 12 months consecutively, show a considerable loss and still possess the will to continue. And for me, that about sums it up. These people produce something that none of us could live without, food, the energy to live. Yet rising costs and lowering prices mean that farm income at the end of the year is non-existent, whilst the other sectors that support the farmer the machinery agents, the feed producers, those selling the fuel continue to turn a profit, and rightly so. But the farmer should also see an income following his or her hard work. Most hill sheep and beef farmers did not avail of the British government's self-employed business interruption scheme, because without subsidy they barely break even each year. 80% of nothing is still nothing. The UFU have highlighted that in the first three weeks of March, prime lamb deadweight price was £4.80 a kilo, dropping immediately to £4.15 a kilo once the lockdown was announced. And of course, lockdown happened just as many farmers were in the middle of lambing or calving, something for which working from home is not an option. The challenges posed by the COVID-19 pandemic and Brexit have put unprecedented pressure on the agri-food sector. It's impossible to expect the sector, or indeed any other organisation, to deal with both these challenges simultaneously. We've seen recently the passing of the British Agricultural Bill, where the Tory government rejected amendments to the bill that would have ensured uh, that food imported internationally would have had to meet the same standards that farm farmers in the North are currently expected to maintain. And the current context of COVID-19 has highlighted the importance of local food production and food security here at home. So the impending exit from the EU and what that means for food importation is a constant worry for local farmers and it should be a worry for all of us. Greater support for small farms has more environmental benefits than supporting large intensive farming practices, particularly in the hills where land management and biodiversity are important. The LMC, in a recent presentation to the Agricultural Committee here, highlighted that beef and sheep meat processing sector employs over 5,000 people in the north. In 2017, its annual turnover was in excess of £1.3 billion. These figures highlight the importance of our farming industry as part of our wider economy and reiterate the need for support to keep farms viable. We need to see help delivered fairly and equitably so that everyone has the means to continue as we make our way out of this pandemic. And in response to earlier comments, it's Sinn Féin's view that no one be excluded, but we want to see everyone included. I will.
the member agree that following on from uh, Ms Burton's comments earlier, that support for this motion does not mean that you do not support other protector sectors um, in, in the agri-food sector? Members, an extra minute. Yes, that's a, exactly the point that I was making. We don't want to see anyone excluded, but we want to make sure that everyone is included, particularly the, the sheep and beef that haven't been uh, mentioned. And I call Colin McGrath. Thank you much, Mr. Deputy Speaker, and I welcome this debate and the opportunity to briefly speak to support uh, the beef and sheep sector in the north and in rural communities such as my own in South Down. Um, the motion references the difficulty that hill farmers face uh, as these farms are often located in areas of natural constraint. And I have many farmers from the north who face difficult conditions, uh, or sorry, farmers from the moorns who face difficult conditions with restrictions on their farming practices due to the additional tourism and natural beauty related conditions. Uh, and this makes their work more challenging and indeed more expensive. Um, this pandemic has seen a major impact upon the supply chain for farmers and their product. Restaurants and cafes are closed and many takeaways are closed or reduced opening hours means that the, the demand for their product is vastly reduced. Um, this has caused major issues for the sector and many are facing unbelievable hardship. As has been mentioned, nearly 20,000 are involved in this sector and they definitely need support and assistance. And I welcome the help uh, offered by the Minister thus far, but of course this is the long game uh, and could continue for the next year or so. And the difficulty with much of the help and support that has been offered so far is short term to try and get people uh, through the worst of this pandemic, but obviously the issues could be with us for much longer. So I think that we uh, need to try and see how we can help and assist the sector uh, in the months and up to the year or beyond uh, going forward. As I say, farmers will face problems that could stretch well into next year and beyond. And of course, uh, the sector is in major difficulty because of COVID, but then we could have the twin impact of Brexit being added on to that, which could create much uncertainty and much difficulty for them in another sense for a further uh, short term, uh, giving them more problems. So cumulatively, these are massive problems for the sector and it does need the assistance. And I think that additional support for the sector is what would be needed. And I would ask the Minister maybe to detail any approaches that he has made to the Finance Minister for additional funding, or if indeed the Finance Minister uh, has made any offers to the uh, Minister of additional funding to see if we can help and assist um, the sector. And I would worry if no consideration has been given uh, to uh, funding and additional funding, given that the motion comes from the party that holds the purse strings. So I would hope that there some of those conversations have been in the background, or otherwise um, the motion could be just building up uh, the hopes and expectations of the sector. And if there isn't the finance to come in behind it, that would be quite unforgivable. Um, I would also ask if the Minister might detail how the funding referred to in this motion will be distributed. I think it has been mentioned before to see if there is a possibility for payments to be weighted by the difficulties that individual farms face because of the constraints that are upon them. So to conclude, this motion references the valuable work that beef and sheep farmers make to the agriculture sector and the wider agri-food sector in the north, and I of course welcome and endorse that. I see day and daily in my constituency in South Down the hard work that takes place, but also the real hardship that there is. And these are unprecedented times, and I look forward to the help and assistance that will be given to the sector and to the assistance going forward in the long term. Thank you. I call Gemma Dolan. Last Concordia. Um, I welcome the opportunity to speak on this motion. While this motion is about support for sheep and beef farmers through the COVID-19 pandemic, it is important to be mindful of the health and well-being of our farmers. I want to highlight the work of rural support during these difficult times. Rural support staff deal with calls to their helpline, which have steadily increased over the period of coronavirus. In a written update to the Agriculture Committee, rural support highlighted that the majority of the calls to their helpline are from people who have concerns regarding some of the following issues. Um, worried about benefits, concerned about their mental health, farming-related matters such as a possible slowdown in the supply chain, the movement of stock and the discontinuation of TB testing, older children moving back home and fearful of the coronavirus and the impact their death may have on the farm. 
In this current climate, we should not underestimate the extreme pressures faced by our farming community. It is vital that they get financial support, including our sheep farmers. The self-employed income support scheme has been helpful to those farms that are perceived to be profitable. But where a farm is not deemed profitable, a farmer cannot draw down the money. We can only guess that a large number of farms in areas of natural constraint will be impacted as they are not making a full-time income from farming in areas of natural constraints and therefore cannot avail of self-employed income support scheme. As you know, I represent the constituency of Fermanagh and South Throne, where almost 90% of land is in less favoured areas. LFA areas are restricted in their business choices due to the limitations of climate and environment. LFA farmers are at the end of livestock production chain. They are vulnerable to price fluctuations. Hill farmers in particular have gotten extra support because they face additional challenges. In a report by the NFU, Farming Delivers for the Hills and Uplands report, it states that the value of hill farming must be recognised if it is to shape the social and economic needs of people living in rural areas. Weather, rising costs and disease leads to hill farmers getting less for their produce while facing increasing production costs. There is a demand for traceable quality products. Natural constraints increase production costs and reduce agricultural opportunities within those designated areas. 70% of land in the north is less favoured areas. Sinn Féin has highlighted the plight of beef and sheep farmers. We do not feel that £2 million pounds is sufficient to deal with the crisis faced by our beef and sheep farmers. In the north, COVID-19 has impacted our beef and sheep industry before lockdown due to the global markets closing. From lockdown in March, the closure of the food industry and the loss of product value and increasing costs, including fertiliser and feed concentrates, to name but two, brought further losses. Cattle and sheep farmers in less favoured areas have generated substantial income losses. The loss of the NC payment being a key contributed factor. Added to this is the HMR scheme, HMRC scheme, which appears to be mostly accessible to businesses that are more profitable. I commend the work undertaken by the Agriculture Committee in engaging with the agri-food sector to have their say to shape and influence how this funding should be distributed. I am aware a number of submissions have been made to the Committee supporting all farmers in receiving direct support, including sheep farmers, who have not been included. This is an equality issue and needs to be addressed immediately. I now call on the Minister of Agriculture, Environment and Rural Affairs, Mr Edmund Putz, to respond to the debate motion. Uh, thank you, Mr. Uh, Deputy Speaker, and could I apologise at the outset for not being in for uh, the Chairman's uh, speech. Um, unfortunately, I, I contacted uh, my office to see what time is likely to take place, and uh, there was no indication that we would be coming forward earlier, so I apologise um, for that. In terms of this particular motion, um, this House is the place to do it, but this is not the time to do it, in terms of the wording of the motion. Because this debate but this funding is not about uplands or lowlands. It is about losses faced by COVID-19 and as a consequence of COVID-19. And the allocation of the funding from the Sinn Féin Minister, Mr Murphy, which I gladly received, although it fell, as Ms Barton pointed out, falls well short of what was requested, was very clear in terms of what it indicated how the money should be spent. This is a document here that comes from the Department of Finance and indicates that the dairy sector has already seen an 8% fall in milk price from almost 26 p a litre in February 20 to 23 p a litre in May for April milk, which is below the production costs in most farms, which is around 25 p. Further decreases are expected in June for May milk. And if prices remain below production costs for any sustained period of time or fell sharply to 20 pence a litre before uh, or below, dairy farmers will quickly go out of business. The cost to support the dairy sector for each penny per litre fall on the price of milk is projected to be 12.4 million from April to September. So that comes from the Department of Finance's economists. The beef sector has seen falls by 15 pence per kilo, around 4 per cent since March. The low prices have stabilised as farmers took advantage of new grass and current prices to hold cattle off market. A further drop is expected later in the year as the need to sell uh, animals increases. And that's well based because there are 14,000 more cattle 
in the system, which would normally have been marketed by now, that haven't currently been marketed. The cost of beef support sector for each 5 per cent in the fall of animals' value is projected to be £9.5 million from April to September. So there's £22 million pounds gone. It then goes on um, to point out the requirements for the horticulture sector, and those are the people who grow products for garden centres, and that's to come out of this money as well. It is also estimated that 40 per cent of the horticulture products at a cost of £1.4 million are already unsaleable. And with garden centres and other outlets opening soon and plant sales resuming, the original projected loss of £3.5 million will be mitigated. But one can see that it is already at least a £1.5 million um, loss. So there is £23.5 million uh, taken out of that already. Potato processors are coming forward to indicate that because they were not selling uh, to the restaurants and hotels, uh, people who are particularly in that uh, end of the market have been left with large quantities of potatoes in their cold stores. Many of them have already started to sell them off at £30 a tonne instead of £170 a tonne, and the consequence of that is substantial losses. Broiler breeders have already come forward as well, indicating that there is a huge downturn in that market uh, from Asia and uh, Middle East um, uh, for, for, for those eggs, and a consequence um, they are facing probably a £2 million pound loss. So one can see the demands. And what I noticed today was the absence of evidence from the members in terms that upland farmers had suffered more than others. And I have to do this on an evidence basis. I cannot do, just give money out nilly-willy to any particular group. It has to be done on the basis of evidence alone. And on the basis of evidence, some people suggest that perhaps the upland farmers are less likely to receive money um, from uh, the, the self-employment scheme than others. But it's based on three years, on the last three years. And in the year 2016-17, LFA farmers got 21,352 uh, on average, to the lowland farmers 16,578. The following year, 17,725 to the lowland farmers 16,637. 600, uh, 16, and the following year, 14,368 uh, to the lowland farmers at £12,274. So the evidence is very clear that the lowland beef farmer and the lowland sheep farmer will actually get less from the self-employed scheme than the upland farmer. But this motion is focusing on upland. Now I want to make it very clear. I see this motion as divisive. And I would say to Sinn Féin, it is your duty to represent all farmers, the people who are involved in, 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 in the agri side of Sinn Féin. It is your duty to represent all of the farming community, not just one sector. And in that respect, it is our, our, our duty as public representatives to seek to try to help those who are battling to get through to the other side of COVID-19 um, to, to enable them to do that. And consequently, the beef farmers who took the cattle out and took the losses over the six weeks in the meat plants are the beef farmers um, who the focus should be on. The sheep farmers who, for a period of two, two to three weeks, took the losses um, on that period are the sheep farmers who should be getting the compensation. The dairy farmers, some of them in the, in the less favoured areas, and quite, quite a few in less favoured areas, are people who are deserving of some compensation um, for their milk um, falling well below the cost of production. And that's what this is about. It's not about upland versus lowland. And I don't think that that should be the case, because the fact of life is, when a beef finisher goes out and he goes, goes to buy the cattle, it doesn't you know, query whether that calf came from an upland farm or a lowland farm. It's, does, it, does it meet my standards? Is that, the, is that the quality of calf that I want? And pays the best possible price, um, or the, he buys it at the best possible price for him, and the, the seller sells it at the best possible price um, to enable that transaction to take place. But the better 
profitability that there is with the beef finisher, the better price he prepares to the breeder. And the consequence of that is that the upland farmer does better when the lowland farmer does better. So I don't see this great divide between upland and lowland. I see one community that need to be supported and need to be brought through this. Yes, sir, how would I be to? Um, I hear what the member is saying. Okay, so he seems to be focusing on the finishers and on the, the dairy sector. But what about the, uh, the farmers who, during the pandemic, were, were selling their, their uh, cattle between farms? And according to his own department statistics, under the AX farm, there's around uh, 7,000 movements per week uh, during the pandemic. How does he propose to compensate those farmers? Because I'm sure he's read the Anderson's report, which has indicated that cattle decreased by £240 per head and sheep by £31 per head. And I don't know what figures he's quoting either for the last number of years of income, because the figures that you referred to the committee minister averaged out the uh, incomes of £12,000 per year for beef and sheep. So I'm not too sure what figures you're referring to today. The figures are, are the, the, the figures, figures produced by the department's economist, so if he wants to query that, he can, can query the economist uh, in the department, but I have every confidence um, in the figures that, that have been quoted to you. In terms of the actual animal movements that took place, um, in, in March there was um, 16,500 movements um, from farm to farm, um, and there was a significant fall-off then whenever the markets closed um, in April. Um, so, farm to market in April um, was 3,300 this year. Um, farm to market in April last year was 39,896. Um, that has recovered quite well in May, um, 34,901 last year to 32,267 this year. And I'd have to say that the actual price of, of cattle, store cattle in the markets has recovered very well, and the market reflects that. Um, but what I'm saying this is a distraction from, from, from the point that I, that, that I have been making, is that this is not about one set of farmers against the other. It's about who was impacted as a consequence of this. And beef finishers were at the sharp end. They were hit with the low prices. It kicked off in January because the Chinese markets were hides and the other fifth quarter products dried up. For a short time, the lambs were affected. And this money has to be allocated on the basis of COVID-19. It has to be based on history. I can't project um, forward and, for example, introduce a slaughter premium, um, because that would uh, defy EU state aid rules. And I am, I, I, I am still um, so subservient to those. I'm not at liberty to distribute to pet projects. I'm constrained. Now, UFU and NIAPA and NIMEA and the Dairy Council have all been engaging with me, and I, I'm not sure whether they've been engaged with me yourselves or whether you've engaged with them, but they've all engaged with me. And the fundamental principle coming from all of them is that this should go to the people who took the hurt. It isn't something uh, which should be distributed to all farmers. And the consequence of that is that that will be where the focus uh, would go if, if, if that is the line that I choose to take. Now, I'll give the House this undertaking. I'm happy to come back later in the year and have we had a period of sustained poor prices over the summer and autumn time and to approach the finance minister again on that basis because that will feed into the upland farmers who show their animals usually in the autumn time, in the main, in the autumn time in the subtle calf sales and if it's demonstrated then that there's been a substantial hit, I'm very happy to go to Conor Murphy and say this has carried on right through the consequences of what happened as a result of COVID in the early part of this year. It has carried on right through to the autumn time. It has hit the suckle farmers in particular, and I'm happy to push for funding for that source. In any event, there's beef farmers, beef finishers amongst the, the LFA areas. Um, the sheep uh, that have went for a loss um, for that period of time should be covered and they will be uh, taking both Lowland and LFA. There are dairy farmers in LFA areas. So all of these people who have taken the hit should be, should be given some recompense. It will not cover the loss, but it will help them get through to the other side of COVID. And that's what's important 
that this house does. And there are some areas that, uh, outside, of, outside of my department where I think some people have been failed. And we need to uh, address those issues. But within the DARE's responsibility, our focus, our responsibility must be to those people who took the hit. This is not about a widespread distribution so that everybody gets a little. This is about focusing the funding to where the hit took place, to where the loss took place. And all ships will rise as a result of it. The benefits um, by, by, by ensuring that those people can survive COVID, those buyers will be there in the autumn time to ensure that prices do hold up. Uh, that is the aim. That is the goal. And unless things deteriorate further, then I believe that is a goal that we can achieve and ensure that um, we can see um, a year in farming, which could have been considerably worse, mitigated considerably as a result of us receiving this additional £25 million. I should say that one other thing. If we really want to see an uplift in agri-food prices, then getting normality back into the market is critical. I have worked very closely with my interministerial uh, group um, of, of devolved ministers in terms of getting the food to go market back, for example. And Mr. Irwin uh, said that one company accounted for 12% of beef sales. Another company accounts for 500,000 chickens per week. Other companies account for masses um, of, of litres of milk um, in terms of the coffee houses, and ice cream parlours, and all of that there. Important to get those businesses going again. It's important to get our hotels and restaurants going again. And to those parties who continue to hold back and say, not yet, not yet, not yet, Whenever the chief scientific advisor and the chief medical officer are actually saying there is a fair degree of latitude actually at the minute because the R figure is low and the numbers of people who have the COVID-19 is low, let's get on with it. Let's get Northern Ireland back to business and let's ensure that the markets out there for the product get stronger once again, where we're not coming looking for public money uh, to compensate people for their losses, but we're ensuring that those people can actually do business in a profitable way. That would be the biggest success story that this Assembly could make. And I call on Philip McGuigan to conclude and wind up the debate on the motion, and you'll have up to 10 minutes. Graham Elgert, uh, last can call your uh, August Tammy Sasta, and yes, a ve ogum la lorch, when a her tawakta shan a new August Boylum, Moehis, Goil, Lesh, Nafirmuri, August Chunskol, and Via Donirect, Saku, Ari, and Pandem. So, I, I, as others uh, have done, want to commend our farmers and the wider agri food industry in contributing to food security and the function of our food supply during this pandemic. As with other workers and sectors during the past few months, uh, a spotlight has been well and truly shone on the importance of. Uh, and the identification of key workers, uh, and that certainly includes those who work on our farms uh, and within our agri-food industry. I include all sections of the farming community in these comments. Uh, farmers are uh, working in difficult circumstances, and in many cases with reduced profits and even worse, financial losses. Uh, undoubtedly, this includes those identified by the Minister. Uh, uh, primarily in this package, who need financial support, but it also includes those unfortunately left out by the Minister in terms of his initial proposal. And that became very clear when the Agriculture, Environment and Rural Affairs Committee opened itself to consultation uh, within the agriculture sector on how the Minister would devise a scheme for di distributing uh, a financial support package. We received numerous responses from right across the board. Uh, and I note the Minister uh, and his contribution talked about the sectors within the agricultural, uh, I mean, and, he, and he pointed out that they were clear that it needed to go to those in need. Well, maybe uh, I would dispute the fact of who they said it needed to go to, because certainly uh, in the committee's consultations, uh, you know, there was a lot of frustration that it was a very close section of the agricultural sector and lots were being forgotten about. And that's why I think this motion today is important. It gives a further voice to that frustration. Uh, I mean, and I also uh, note that the Minister 
wasn't happy with the motion. He, I think he said it was divisive. I fail to see how that's the case, given to this point, you know, it seems to have the support of the SDLP, uh, the Alliance Party, and, and potentially the Ulster Unionist Party, as well as ourselves. So I don't think he should be bringing divisive politics into this very important matter. I mean, it's clear that the beef. I, I actually gave way on the last debate I was speaking, and run out of time. So perhaps towards the end, uh, the beef and sheep sector have been very vocal, for example, on this issue. Uh, these two sectors make a major contribution to the economy here in the north. As others have said, DARE's own figures estimate that the gross turnover of the beef and sheep meat processing sector is just over $1.3 billion. I welcome the fact that the Minister has been given a $25 million package courtesy of the Finance Minister. And I note uh, Mr McGrath's comments. I was a bit perturbed by them because I mean, we're, we're, we're not talking uh, today about additional fund. Obviously, we would appreciate additional funding, but you know, the, the $25 million is a welcome package. Uh, I note at the beginning of this crisis, the Minister sought funding from uh, Europe and Westminster and did not get it from either of those sources, but did get it from the Finance Minister. What we need to be talking about today is not wanting more, which we do, but how we spend this package, which is welcome fairly. And the, those were even the words of the Minister as well. So this can and should, the package can and should help mitigate against some of the losses felt with the industry. And I note what the Minister said about all the losses and, and it, when he was totaling up figures. There is no doubt that it won't go to alleviating all of that, but it will alleviate uh, the worst excesses if it's distributed fairly. And I note that that is the case. It needs to be help across the whole agricultural industry. In addition, it needs to be distributed fairly uh, and equitable, as others have said. Lessons can and should be learned from other schemes in other departments. And I note again that the Minister alluded to that within his own address. I mean, he, like myself, from a constituency perspective, away from agriculture, I'm sure is unfortunately receiving heartfelt pleas from individuals and business owners, sole traders, etc., uh, who have not been able to access uh, the various government schemes, business support grants, or self employment payments because of certain stipulations. And I empathise totally with them and their predicaments, uh, which unfortunately have put severe financial strains on many individuals and families and businesses. And in some cases, we will see their businesses cease to exist. So, given the range of phone calls I have received uh, in the last number of weeks from across the agri-food industry and sector, uh, I, I say it must be specific, and most specifically from sheep and beef farmers, it is imperative that the Minister devises a scheme which I and others have said must be fair and equitable and reaches as far across the industry as possible to help those farmers affected by uh, uh, COVID-19. As a bit of an aside, when we are looking in the aftermath of COVID-19 uh, to see how we can improve the agricultural sector, I think it is clear we do need more All-Ireland uh, harmonisation. An All-Ireland Agri-Food Task Force would better coordinate supply chain issues an All-Ireland Agri-Food Task Force was also enable more joined-up thinking around development, legislation, uh, alignment and so on. And this is something that Sinn Féin have called for and will continue to call for. Uh, and the agri-food industry here has flagged up the growing gap between North and South in terms of financial support. Uh, this gap has not only been with COVID support but also Brexit support, where, for example, the Irish Government have given a €100 million Euro Brexit aid package to the beef producers, and lots of the contributions to this point have mentioned uh, the impact of Brexit as well as COVID on our agri food sector. Back to the motion COVID 19 uh, calling for support for beef and sheep farmers, and I should repeat, uh, others in my party have said uh, in response to questions that the comments and support that we are asking for uh, is not to the detriment of other sections of the agri-food uh, industry that need support and aren't mentioned in our support. They all do deserve support, but so too do the beef and sheep sector. And within this sector, because it isn't exclusively uh, hill sheep, you know, but within this, it's clear that COVID-19 has had a disproportionate impact on beef and sheep farmers in areas of natural constraint. And I note the minister talked in his contribution about evidence, and I would uh, ask him to, I know he was late to the debate, but to reread uh, the, the Hansard report, because in that he will get plenty of evidence and read the consultations that came before the committee from uh, groups and individuals within the sector, because contained within all of that, there is ample evidence. We, uh, I, I 
will give way towards the end. We know that before COVID-19, beef and sheep farms were already experiencing severe profitability challenges. Farm gate beef and sheep prices have moved downward. Input prices have increased, putting more pressure on our beef and sheep farmers. Uh, there are 24,000 farms in the north. From this figure, 17,000 of those are in less favoured areas, and lots of uh, people uh, have detailed the, the impact on severely disadvantaged farmers. You know, there, that's 9,730 farms across the north. You know, and as the saying goes, we are all in this together. So ANC farmers, as has been talked about here, have experienced a loss in product value, including fertiliser and feed concentrates, to name two losses. You know, farmers don't go to the market to lose money, while at the same time experiencing uh, increasing costs. And uh, my colleague mentioned the Anderson's report, and I would uh, refer all of us to the challenges contained within that posed by COVID-19 to the beef and lamb sector. Again, detailing lots of, of evidence. So it's not acceptable that sheep farmers have been left out of, or potentially left out of, any agri fund support. They face the same challenges as other sectors, such as closure of markets, reduction in farm gate prices, and increasing costs. All of this as an impact of COVID-19. So, in conclusion, my remarks: uh, it's clear that COVID-19 control measures have had a very significant adverse impact on land-based livestock sectors, including lamb and beef. And these two sectors, along with others, must be included in any minister scheme to support uh, the, the industry. And just uh, in wrapping up, because my time is short, and I not detail all the comments that people made because I won't have time. But you know, it was clear that lots of the arguments were the same, detailing the impact right across the agricultural sector, but in particularly the impact of beef and sheep farms, uh, and particularly in, in upland sectors. The other, all, most contributors talked about other schemes not being able to support and sustain this sector that they lost out because of low profitability over the years. Uh, you know, uh, my, my colleague, the chair of the committee, uh, after an intervention fr from Mr Buckley, did highlight that all farmers have been impacted. Uh, Justin McNulty talked about the impact of COVID-19 on farmers because of uh, uh, market closures. He talked about Brexit, other schemes not designed with farmers in mind. Uh, William Irmine talked about the importance of food production, the impact of the hospitality food sector, as others did, and the impact that this, this has had. Uh, but stated that some sectors haven't been affected, which I, I would obviously. Would the member draw remarks to close? Okay. Uh, as I say, most people, uh, with the exception of the DUP, uh, highlighted the support for this motion and the need for the support to be across the industry. And I would support the motion and the, the, commend it to the House. Members, the question is that the motion standing in the order paper be agreed. All those in favour say aye. Contrary, no. no. All those in favour say aye. aye. Contrary, no. no. Clear the lobbies. The question will be put again in three minutes. Can I remind members to uphold social distancing and that members who have proxy voting arrangements should not come into the chamber? Order, members. Order. The following tellers have been appointed tellers for the ayes, Declan McLear and Philip McWigan. Tellers for the nose, William Irwin and Jonathan Buckley. Before the Assembly divides, I remind you that as per Standing Order 112, the Assembly currently has proxy voting arrangements in place. Members who have authorised another member to vote on their behalf are not entitled to vote in person and should not enter the lobbies. It is important to note that during any division, social distancing in the Chamber should continue to be observed. And in order to facilitate this, I would ask the following. Any member in the chamber who are not due to vote in person should consider leaving the chamber until the division is concluded. Those members who wish to vote in the lobbies on the opposite side of the chamber to which they are sitting should leave the chamber via the nearest door and enter the relevant lobby via the rotunda. 
Those remaining members who are sitting closest to the lobby doors should enter the lobbies first. Any member who has voted may then wish to leave the chamber until the division has concluded. However, any member who needs to vote in both lobbies should not leave the chamber. I remind members of the need to be patient at all times and to, instruct, uh, and to follow the instructions of the lobby clerks and to respect the need for social distancing. Clear the lobbies. The assembly will divide eyes to my right, nose to my left. Do you have the bells? Order, members. Would members resume their seats? Order. Order, members. Clark, please read the result. Result. 82 members voted, 55 members voted aye, 27 members voted no. The motion is carried. The motion is carried. The motion is carried. Unfasten the doors. Uh, I will now pause briefly to allow members to return to the chamber.